Hey, I filmed this whole thing on my camera, but it was dead the whole time. So uh, enjoy the audio. Thanks. Get ready to enter a new dimension. It's time to put on your real D 3D glasses. <sighs> 3D movies. So um, 3D movies is a very fascinating concept to me because growing up in the early 2000s, I was obsessed with it. Something about 3D movies really captivated me. I don't know what it was. I guess it was the fact that it was just in your face and I don't I really don't know. It was just something that was really cool to me. So 3D has always been around for decades, even way before the 2000s where it became very popular with modern audiences. William Castle, also known as the Gimmick King, started this kind of audience immersion. He's done, there's countless of examples of what he's done with his movies, but one of my favorite is of actually a really good movie that I enjoy, House on Haunted Hill. I've only spent one night there, and when they found me in the morning, I, I was almost dead. It's a classic 1959 film starring Vincent Price, the king, Vincent Price. William Castle wanted to do something interesting with this film. So, towards the end, um, and I'm, I'm not sure if he did anything throughout the film, but I think it was leading up to the ending of the film, and it's fucking hilarious. So at the end of the film, there's a final, like, scare. Uh, just, uh, roll the clip real quick. Me, murderous. Come with me. So, <laughs> that was terrifying back in the day, apparently. So when that scene was playing in the theater, a plastic skeleton was thrown at the audience to scare them even more. Why don't we do this today? <laughs> Have a little fucking avatar flying around. We're really in Pandora! They're coming for me now. And then they'll come for you. It, it literally couldn't get better than that. So yeah, it has been around forever, it has been a gimmick for so long, and now that it's dead at this point, I think it's really easy to say how stupid it really was. What about it is really going to make you more immersed into the story? Is it because the foreground looks closer than the background, or things are getting shot at your face very closely? I don't know. So the first movie that I saw in 3D was Tangled. I think it was because that it took so long for my small town theater to even get 3D in the first place. So by the time it came, that like around 2010 is when we finally got it. So I saw Tangled and yeah, it was really cool at the time. The movie is pretty good by itself. I haven't seen it ever since, but um, from memory, it was um, just absolutely amazing to see. And then from there, I went on to watch Amazing films like Yogi Bear in 3D, Nomeo and Juliet in 3D, and The Lego Movie. The Lego Movie was pretty cool. The Lego Movie was the last 3D movie that I have ever seen, and I'm fine with that, because my theater, about four years after they put it in, no longer supported it. Because it was either too expensive to keep up with, or maybe ticket sales weren't even worth keeping it. So, about around that time in 2014, a little film called Spy Kids 4D came out. And I remember seeing the ads for this when it was coming out on TV and thinking, what's the point of this? 4D, Aromascope, for free. It's not 4D, necessarily. It's more just a 3D movie, and then they give you cards to scratch and sniff whenever they tell you to. With your free Aromascope card. So it's not so much of an experience, it's more, oh, smell the poop card because it's gross and it's funny. No, there's no point. It's stupid. Spy Kids, all 
the time in the world. I almost forgot to mention that I also saw the Phantom Menace in 3D, which is another thing, because they tried to release all the Star Wars films chronologically, canonly, with the films. The greatest saga of all time is coming to the big screen in spectacular 3D. They tried to release every single Star Wars movie in 3D. I remember this was being a big deal. But you're gonna start with The Phantom Menace, arguably one of the worst Star Wars movies ever, besides the recent sequel trilogy, of course. But really? <laughs> I remember seeing this in theaters and taking like a thousand bathroom breaks because of how bored I was. Look, 3D was all the hype here. Or 3D. There really is no 3D in this movie. It's 3D less. The 3D is terrible. And I know they worked really hard and I know they spoke to James Cameron's people and did all that stuff. Believe me, I'm not the only person. I sat there in a really nice screening room, the View Cinema in Eastleigh, where they did a lovely job of projecting it and the image was dull and t so. And I was never really a big fan of Star Wars and I still am not really a fan, but why start with the Phantom Menace? At least start with the fourth one so you get the most ticket sales where it's like everybody wants to see Star Wars in theaters. Even if it's just a re-release and you watch it in 2D, people are going to see it. People are gonna go to the theater to go and see that. So, who wants to sit in the theater and watch Phantom Menace again? Bad idea. Who the, f who the fuck came up with that idea? I'm also remembering that I saw the... What is it called? The Legend of Oz? No. The, um... Sam Raimi film. Return... No, no. Oz the Great... That movie was also really bad. <laughs> now I'm thinking... And literally... All the movies that were built around... 3D suck. They're all bad because they're all focused on the eye-popping 3D aspect, the flying shit at your face, and they didn't remember to tell a good story. Hmm. So yeah, um, I think 3D from this point on, other than Avatar 2 sales, is dead. Nobody's gonna want to see 3D movies anymore. Nobody wants to see Fast and the Furious 10 in 3D. It's already miserable enough. So yeah, that's my ramble today about 3D movies. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Um. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, of course it wasn't recording. With your free program, let's go, guard. <laughs> Thank you.